So now to the problem of evil and suffering. And here's the, the argument as Rhoda uh, formulates it, and this is on the handout. <clears throat> Rhoda's argument from suffering. If God existed, then there wouldn't be a vast amount of suffering in the world. But there is a vast amount of suffering in the world. Therefore, God doesn't exist. Okay, so we'll go through this rather quickly. Rhoda says that premise one relies on the assumption that if God both desires and is able to prevent some instance of suffering, then he would prevent that instance of suffering. Um, and you get that from the idea that if God's supposed to be all-loving, all-powerful, all-good, then um, then if there's something bad, you get rid of it, right? Um, okay, so now how does Rhoda try to argue um, against that principle? Um, if God both desires and is able to prevent some instance of suffering, then he would prevent the instance of suffering. Uh, he uses an example on page 145 of a girl um, who has bone cancer and has to go through chemotherapy. Um, now, in that case, supposing you're the parent, you uh, you let your child go through that. Uh, you, you let your daughter go through that. And the reason is um, because there is a good reason, right? Um, you want to prevent something worse from happening. So it's not the case that just because something... Um, um, is bad that we want to get rid of it immediately because it might be to prevent something worse from happening or it might actually bring about something better in the long run. Uh, that's the general idea. Now, what Rhoda says, if that's the case, then what we have is, uh, and this is the, that bottom quote of the handout, this observation, this is the quote, raises the possibility that God could have a reason for allowing suffering. Doing so may be necessary to achieve one or more greater goods or ward off one or more greater evils. Okay, so, um, and that's supposed to kind of counter either premise one or the what he says is the assumption that premise one relies on. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder to show that for God because um, unlike me, I can't just, you know, zap away uh, bone bone cancer, but God's supposed to be all powerful, right? So why, why wouldn't God do it? And Rhoda's going to say, hey, look, just theoretically, there could be reasons that God has for allowing evils that, um, and, and that's the main point, that if there are such reasons, it's just false, that automatically, if there's a bad thing, then um, a, a God would get rid of it. Because theoretically, it could be preventing worse evils or allowing for greater goods. Okay, that's the first line of response um, to the problem of evil, but there is, of course, much more to be said, so we'll dive into that.